Shalom Abraha with the Jewish show, good week. We are this week in the month of Tammuz, about a few days, a few weeks from Tisha B'Av, and we know the reason why the Beit HaMikdash was destroyed. Our Rabbi said, because they did not respect the Torah, they did not study the Torah, they, because they did not uh, do effort on the Torah, on the effort on the Torah, as you know. A lot of times we do effort for everything, like uh, somebody who's looking for a house because it's uh, an emergency for him, he will do everything to find a house. So, in the Libuda Torah as well, we must have this kind of to do effort. When you do effort to study Torah, so you will respect the mitzvot of the Torah. This is something that everyone should know. Doing effort, that means that you love the thing. You know, my friend, we see on business, we do effort for business. And why we do effort on business? Because we want to make money. And you, even just to make a living, you do effort, a lot of effort just to make a living. So you have to, to understand when it comes to the Torah and mitzvot, you need to do effort. By doing effort, you show how much you love them. Somebody asked me one day, Rabbi, Rabbi, how can I love the Torah? I told him, the same way, how you make effort to make money, the same way that you know that without money you cannot live. Well, you have to, exactly, you have to do the same for the, for the Torah. You have to love it. You have to really, to love it. You know, my friend, I just received a letter from somebody that uh, he had a big problem with his son, that he was very, very, very ill. And he has only one. And uh, the, he went to all doctors. He went, he traveled with him. And that kind of illness that he had, it was very, very, very dangerous. And he cannot live uh, longer than 20, than than, than 20 years. It's impossible because it's getting worse and worse and worse and worse and worse. So, what, what he decided? He told me this. He decided right now that there is no way to escape this. So, the only thing I have left is to come back to Hashem and to do all what I can really for Hashem. And if Hashem wants, so I told him that uh, Hashem is not a joke. It's not only because uh, you need Hashem, so you do all this kind of sacrifice, and once you get everything, you forget Him. He said, no, Rabbi, I tried everything I saw. I have only one thing left, it's Hashem. So I decided, my wife and me, just to do the best we can to respect our mitzvot. And, uh, and then I saw him a few times. They had the same thing. And then he started to come to see me to ask me about other things. So I told him, you don't ask me anymore about your son. He said, well, my son now is in the hand of Hashem. My friend, I promise you, I just received a letter. I emailed from him. He could reach me because I am and I am I'm traveling. What he did not expect, it just happened. One of the doctors called him. He told him, I want to see your son. I want to see uh, how much worse he, 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 in which level now he is. Because as I told you before, what he had, the kind of illness that he had, that he can only, only go worse to worse. So he wanted to see the level of, like we see from 1 to 10. So he wanted to see where, where, what kind of situation? And he couldn't believe the doctor. He said, well, maybe we have to do 
checking everything again because I don't understand. I don't see nothing. For me, it's a, it's a, like a black and white. It's, a, it's, it's incredible. I don't. There is nothing. So, it, so it did it all kind of test again, all over again, and the, the miracle happened. Everything was perfect, and the, you don't understand. Is perfect when, 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 my friend. This is when, when you, you know a mother when her baby cry, you, and she had to wake up in the, in, the, in the middle of the night to feed him. Do you think she? It's an effort she's doing to wake up to give him food. It's a normal. It, okay, it's a big effort, but it's normal. It's our son. My friend, this is the way we have to act. We have to we must behave with Hashem. We, we must uh, feel that it's normal that we have to serve Hashem with love. My friend, this is the reason why the Bita Mikdash was destroyed. The Bita Mikdash was destroyed because, because of they did not, you know, when Hashem gave the Torah, they said, Na'asei b'nishma. It was a, a big compliment that Hashem gave to the Jews. That the Jews said, Na'asei b'nishma. We do. Then we hear. Usually, you hear after you do. But then the Jewish people, they, they went to a high level. They said, we do. And that's how we're here. Can you imagine what, what that means? Usually, when you when you want to to buy a business, you you look, you you hear, you you look at the books to find out what kind of business you want to buy, and then you buy. You don't buy after you look. So this is the Jewish people. They they said Nase Venishma Nashem. It was very proud of them because they said Nase Venishma. Now, my friend. You understand when all the Jews they were in Matan Torah and all Jews they said Naase Nishma. Unfortunately, they did a big, 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 big mistake. The Beit Hamikdash was not destroyed only because they didn't do mitzvot b'simcha, like the Torah said, Tahat Asher Ra'abatem et Asher Elokere b'simcha. Because you did not serve Hashem with happiness, all those bad things happen to you. My friend, you have to know, when you do mitzvot, or you study the Torah, or you leave your Judaism without happiness, automatically, you will not do the mitzvot. You will not, because, I mean, when somebody wants to get married, I mean, he will not go under the chuppah if he's not happy. Of course he's happy. Otherwise, it's, it's a big day. So when you we do the mitzvah, we have to do the mitzvah very, very happily. We must be happy. If we do the mitzvah and we are not happy, we say Hashem, we are not happy. We go to synagogue, it's like a big deal. We do tzedakah, it's like a big deal. So when you do mitzvah without happiness, so you don't do the mitzvah right. And if you don't do the mitzvah it's right, so that means that you don't love Hashem. How can you prove you said that you love Hashem? Only by doing Torah mitzvot happy. This is the way, and you do an effort for them. I mean, my friend, it's a... When you do an effort for something because, because you love it, and you are happy to do it. So, for Hashem, we have to, to serve Him happily, with simcha, we have to serve Him with effort, and we have to serve Him right and the right way, because he did not respect the love to Hashem, the effort to serve Hashem, the happiness to serve Hashem. Unfortunately, it's like they did not uh, respect their word. Because when Hashem gives the Torah, they said, Na'ase b'nishma. So you know, it's the word. Na'ase b'nishma, not only for the moment, Na'ase b'nishma for life and because unfortunately
they did not respect their word, so the Beit Hamikdash was destroyed. Because now we talk about the parish of this week, the parish of this week is Parashat Matot Masai. Parashat Matot Masai, the Torah said that Hashem is said to Moshe Rabbeinu to talk to, to the head of the Jewish people, that, that mean all the big rabbis, or all the all the Sanhedrin, to all all the old people, and tell them. And Hashem said to Moshe, tell to the 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 prince of Israel, the 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 leaders of uh, of the the twelve tribes that lo yachederau kirev hashit simipi v'yaratzi. When they talk, when they said something, they have to make sure that all what is come out from their mouth, they should respect it. Lo yachederau. He should not just uh, uh, say. Promise something and we not respect it. Whatever he come out from his mouth, he should do it. My father, Al Shalom, once he told me, David, I want to tell you something. A word, when you promise something, it's like, it's like you swear. I swear to do that. It's very important, a Jew, that Hashem give him the neshama. He should be very, very careful. All what he promised, all what he, he said, he should respect it. You promise to do something, a good thing, you have to do it. Of course, if you promise to do a sin, of course it's a mitzvah not to respect your promise. But here we are talking about good things. You promise to your wife, your child, you promise something to somebody. You know, my friend, a lot of people, they promise to their children anything just to calm them down and after they forget. That is no good because they teach their children to lie. You promise to your children something, you have to respect it. So this is what the Torah said. And my father said, it's so important for a Jew to respect his word, because by respecting his word, it's like he's, he's swearing. Because you know, when Hashem created Adam, what was the speciality of Adam to be, to be the best creator of the world? So, the, the, our Rabbi said, I think it's the Targum, said, what is the difference between a man and an animal? Animal cannot talk, but the man can talk. The only one who wished to talk before it was Hashem. Hashem, he, he was the only one who can talk because uh, he, when he created the world, he said, Vayomer Hashem, Hashem said, I want this, and Hashem said, I want that. So Hashem, he give that kind of power to talk only to the man, not to the animals. Why Hashem did that? So Hashem, so we can do the difference between a man and an animal. An animal cannot talk, a man can talk. No, don't bring me a proof from the parroquet. The parroquet, he can only repeat what you said, but the parroquet, he, he don't have the, he will not uh, shake, uh, buy a ticket, do chicken, <coughs> add a suitcase. No, only a man. Actually, he gives to a man the chokhmah to build to create, to talk, you know, the way we behave today, Baruch Hashem, we behave like a mesh, like, not like animals, animals, they, if they dig, they dig with their hands, you know, there is a big difference between a man and animal, but, but all this is because a man can talk, he can have a conversation with somebody, have ideas, I mean, give a, a lecture, give a big conference. I mean, things that you cannot see with animals. So, when Hashem, He give to the man the, the strength, the koah, the strength to talk, 
So it's very, very important that all the talk of a man is holy. So when you promise a good promise, you have to respect it. I would like to tell you some abusive story about the Chaim Evolujin. But before I tell you the story, I would like just to tell you what Rabbi Yosef al Shalom said. He said, when a man respects his word, when when a man he do respect his word, so I can as well, he respects all what you ask him. When as a man, David Pinto, if I respect my word, so Hashem will respect my word. That means if I ask for Hashem something, so he will answer me. Because I respect my word. It's, a, it's incredible. Lo yachel devaru. When I promise to somebody something, I have to respect it. If I respect it, so Hashem will respect all what I ask from you. And my friend, you have to know, if sometimes we see that Hashem is not answer to our children, because because our children is from the mouth. Probably because we don't respect our mouth. What we promise, we don't respect. So this is something that everyone should know. So my friend, you know, on Yom Kippur, on Yom Kippur, on Rosh Hashanah, the, the, two holidays, the, the two holidays are, are very special. We use a lot with the mouth, we pray all the time. The shofar, we blow the shofar with the mouth. All day on Yom Kippur, we, we pray. We use our mouth all day. Can, can, did, you, did you think, did you thought why Yom Kippur it's only a mouth? And even on Rosh Hashanah, there is a lot of things that we eat. Sambala uh, is, you know, a good year, sweet year, that Hashem should cancel all, all kind of gizer out the mouth. Well, my friend, because Adam Arishon, he was born on Rosh Hashanah. And the speciality that Hashem gave him on Rosh Hashanah, the day he was born, that he can talk like him. Can you imagine? Unfortunately, with this mouth, we did a lot of bad things. Unfortunately. So, what it is, the solution? Do Teshuvah. Teshuvah is to say to Hashem, forgiveness. So we use Rosh Hashanah and Kippur. We use the mouth that, because of this mouth, we did a lot of bad things during the whole year. So we use it Rosh Hashanah and Kippur to pray to Hashem. So we repair our mouth. Hey friend, one day there was a friend Bolujin, Alav Shalom, that he gave a, a fabulous lecture on Rosh Hashanah. All the people. Oh, really, everybody was shocked the way he spoke beautifully on Rosh Hashanah. He spoke really beautifully on Rosh Hashanah. And that shocked the people. And uh, every year, the Rakhim of Ologin, that he was this, the student, the Talmud of the Gaumi Bina, he will repeat the same lecture every Rosh Hashanah, the same. And that helped a lot of Jews to do Teshuvah. One day, he's, he's uh, telling me, he, one of his students, he said to himself, when I go, and I will be rabbi somewhere, I will repeat the lecture that Rabbi Nebulogine said. I will, I will repeat it. Okay. So, that man go, become a big rabbi, and he became a rabbi of a big city. So he decided to repeat the same lecture that his rabbi, Afrem Bologin, he said a few years ago. He said, well, that's going to be my first year to give this lecture to people. Maybe I will shock them the, way, the same way that Afrem Bologin shocked the whole city of Bologin when he talked. Uh, on, when, he, when he gives his speech on Rosh Hashanah. 
So he started his speech and he realized that no one considered his speech. Nothing changed. No cry. No pretty change. It's, it's then he told him, my friend, do you understand me? So they told him, yes, we did answer. He didn't like it. the 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 shiro. Yeah, it's not bad. So he realized that he didn't shock them through his word the same way after evolution shocked everybody, he made, he made everybody cry. So he, he had a pain. Why? What difference between him and Abraham Evolution? One day, he met his old friend that he was with him, the Yeshiva, and they started to talk. So, he asked him, you remember, a few years ago, maybe 20, 30 years ago, when Abraham Evolution, he, he said his famous lecture of Rosh Hashanah. Ah, of course, of course, oh la la. He, says, he said, every year I remember the lecture of uh, revolution. And every year I, I, that helped me to do more teshuva. So he told him, my friend, I want to ask you something. How come that I didn't shock people when I told him this, the, all the shio, word by word, like a revolution he told us. Why did he shock them? So he told him, my friend, you want to compare yourself to a revolution? You want to, you want to compare your mouth to the mouth of a revolution? Look, I want to tell you something. There were two people, two big doctors, that the the fabric a kind of medicine a nice a beautiful medicine for headache but uh, it was uh, very funny that one of them one doctor is his medicine had success everyone will buy it and he will cure from this medicine, but his friend that he has the same laboratory and if I make the same medicine had no chance. People would not buy from him, even that he was cheaper, and not only this, but a lot of people they thought that it's dangerous to take that that kind of medicine that this doctor fabric, a lot of people pass away with this what did, so now the rabbi asked his friend what the difference between those two doctors? They are two good doctors, they study the same in the university, they have the same medicine, they use the same ingredient. Why one has success and the other one don't have success? They have laboratories. What is the difference between them? So he said, yes, why? Why have one has a success, the other one don't have a success? So he told him because the one, the doctor who has success in his medicine, he clean his, 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 uh, where he fabric the, the medicine, you know, it's sterile. He make, you know, the, 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 the equipment sterilized, sterilized them with alcohol, you know, he leave them clean. So, when you fabric medicine and the, the equipment very clean, so the medicine, it can do effect, it's good. It can help you to be well. But if you don't, if you don't sterilize the equipment and just you just to fabric the medicine, this uh, equipment and equipment, it's filthy. It's not clean, it's dirty. So the, the medicine that you fabric there, it could be dangerous. So he said, my friend, you understand me. The mouth of the Bechayim Bologin was sterilized, was a holy mouth. Like the Torah said, Loya 
Kecholashi Timi Pivirati, that his mouth was a holy mouth. So, all it came out from his mouth, it was good. It was good. But you, maybe, how can you consider, just the way that you consider yourself as a Khemvologin, it's a mistake. That way, your word it didn't do any effect on nobody. And besides this, maybe you spoke Lashon Allah. Maybe, who knows, don't, don't, don't compare your mouth to the mouth of the Khemvologin. So the rabbi says, you're right. All right. But my friend, as I thought, they were, they were his song, Gava. You know, my friend, I saw somebody, the way he was talking with a Gava, you know, arrogance. I mean, arrogance. One day I saw somebody, the way he was talking, I told him, I think, you, never you will have success in your life. Because a man who is arrogant, the way you talk, you think you are, you are the Baal Abayit. Only Hashem, he is Baal Gaaba. Only Hashem, he is, uh, he can, he, is, he can be, arrogant. the Gaaba can belong only to Hashem. Not to us, we are nothing. We have to be humble. What was the success of Moshe Rabbeinu? That Moshe Rabbeinu had success. Until now, we say, Torah Tzivalano Moshe Murasha Kila Tzavo. What? Why? Well, because Moshe Rabbeinu was humble. And because he was humble, was what he came out from his mouth, it was accepted. Because his mouth, always he used his mouth for good things. In the parasha, my friend, of this week, we saw after the war, when the Jews made the war against Midian, and when they came back with uh, all, uh, after winning the war, and they bring with them women for Midian, Moshe Rabbeinu was very angry. He was very angry, Moshe Rabbeinu. He told them, why? Why did, why did, did you bring women for Midian? And the Torah said, that Moshe Rabbeinu, because he got angry, he forgot some halachot. Hashem punished him. And he forgot Halachot. Hashem wanted to teach Moshe Rabbeinu Moshe. Always you use your mouth for good things. And today you use your mouth to shout at the Dibni Yisrael why they bring women from Midian. There is a way. Tell them. Tell them. There is no good. Tell them nicely, quietly. You don't need to scream at them. You don't need to get very angry against them. And he forgot. Just imagine. They ask halakha to Moshe Rabbeinu. And Moshe Rabbeinu, you don't have an answer. You don't have any answer. You just, you look. So his nephew, El Azar, the son of Aaron Cohen, he started to say the halakhot to the Bnei Yisrael. To them, this is the halakhot that Hashem teach to Moshe Rabbeinu. Can you imagine? My friend, One day, I was, uh, I prepared a shio of Torah. And uh, I saw that uh, I, had, I had something missing in my lecture. I, I mean, uh, I prepared a good show, but something was missing. And I knew that was what was missing. It's a... Uh, if Hashem will not help me to catch, to have an answer for my, for my, uh, for my lecture, I mean, I will have... A, I will, uh, I will have a problem. Uh, it's like uh, I will tell the, the, the assembly, I will tell them, well, I have a, 
I have something missing in my lecture. So I ask Hashem, Hashem, please help me to find an answer, to find something to help my lecture. Because all my lecture was based about the respect of tzaddikim. And I needed something, an example. And the, why we respect the tzaddikim? Because the tzaddikim, they give their life for us. So, the more love we give them, so the more Hashem will give them clarity to help us. You understand? You have to know something. Even Hashem one day said to Moshe Abel Moshe, if you reach that high level, that high level, only because of the Jews. Because if the, if the Jews they didn't, they didn't need you, so I will not give you this high level. So you understand me, my friend? The, so, all what I am today, not because I am Rabbi David Pinto, only because of you. Because you more, the more you need, the more you ask me, or the more you show that you need me, so Akashuku will help me to help you. So, I depend on you. You don't depend on me, but I depend on you because you can live without me, but I can live without you. So that means I need you more than you need me. The more I am, Baruch Hashem, uh, uh, understand the Torah, is because I have to teach you. And the more I see that you listen to me, the more I see that that you you want to learn from me. So I can work with help me to understand more. So I can give more. You know, my friend, sometimes when you see a cow that she feed, she feed milk to, uh, to a small uh, cup. And we think that the cow, he, he, make, he, he do a favor to the cup to give him milk. You know, my friend, it's the cup The cup help his mother more than what the mother help him. Because if there is no cup to drink the milk from the mother, the mother she will suffer, she will be heavy. So we, we think the country, you think without the mother there is no cup. But the mother, she will answer, oh, without the cup I will not be here because I will suffer. And take you, take the take. Thanks to the cup that he, he take for me the milk. So it makes me light. So my friend, it's the same. The more, the more people think they want to learn from me, I will tell them, I learn from them. Because the more I know that they want to learn from me, so I have to study more. So I can give them. So that will be a favor, not, not I do them a favor. So my friend, what happened? I was sitting in the middle of Er Shabbat, Le Chadudi, Le Katkala, we sing in the synagogue. Suddenly I stand up. I went to the library. I took a book. It was the book of Rabbi Tzhak Alevi, the Babi Tshuv. And I opened it. When I opened it, I saw a question. Why did Tzadikim, the Magid Mizrich asked a question, why did Tzadikim be need to, to go to very low level to mix with people that they are not religious? Why did Tzadikim will not just mix with people like them? Why to mix with low with low people? And the, the answer, the married misery that he was telling me the answer, beautiful answer. 
He said because an example if they tell you there is a diamond that cost a billion dollar he failed on the toilet and the toilet is filthy and you have to go with your clothes in that hole to take the diamond would you do it on one hand it's dirty you will vomit yeah, it's smelly but on the other hand it's a diamond a diamond that you can buy palaces you can be a billionaire a diamond so what you do of course even if you have a white suit you will enter to that hall full of uh, dirty things just for the diamond to clean it then you change your clothes you throw them and then you have a, if you're a millionaire the Maggie Mizrich said every Jew is a diamond a Jew without Torah is like a diamond that he is filthy so a tzaddik he has to to make himself low to pick that diamond to clean it and you have a diamond and then you teach him Torah from your mouth and as you know words of Torah that came out of the mouth of a tzaddik they, they do they do an, an impact to those who listen I'm telling you a lot of times I learned from tzaddikim only through their mouth I will never forget in my life one day I saw my rabbi it was 60 years ago 60 years ago I was 12 years old I saw my rabbi Rabbi Lugershon Lidman he was walking and he was saying Sone Hashem Kogvadev he was repeating Sone Hashem Kogvadev that means Hashem he can't stand somebody that is arrogant and he was repeating 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 I will never forget. I am now 72 years old. I will never forget those words coming out, coming out from a holy mouth. And this is the parasha of this week, Matot Masai. The parasha of this week, Matot Masai, a lot of to learn from this parasha. To learn how much a person should be very careful from what he talk, what he promise, what a lot of times people they don't put attention from what they, it come out from their, their mouth look my friend the temple was destroyed because of what the temple was destroyed because of something that happened a few hundred years ago when Hashem sent the spies to spy Israel and they came and they started to talk bad about Israel. Mouth, bad mouth. I mean, what they said, it was, it was the truth. They didn't lie. What they said was the truth. They, they, they said, they repeat what they saw. They saw jailed. They saw people dying every day. They saw a lot of things. But the way they, they said those words, it's to make or the Jews to be afraid to go to Israel. I mean, yeah, sometimes even to say bad news to somebody, you know, the, the Gemara said there was somebody who, a rabbi, who asked another rabbi, did, did X rabbi die? So Rabbi Akiva said, well, I didn't tell you this, you said it, you understand? Even Rabbi Akiv, when Abel Azar passed away, so the rabbi they wanted to know if Rabbi Azar passed away. So they asked Rabbi Akiv, did he pass away? No. So he, what was his answer? He didn't say, yeah, yes, he passed away. No. He said, I didn't say that. You said it. You understand, my friend? How much we have to be careful how to use our mouth. And unfortunately, because of this, the temple was destroyed. Because all the Torah based with the mouth. All the Tila, the mouth. 
studier Torah de Mar. To do a mitzvah, I mean, you know, to do a mitzvah, it's uh, uh, before you do the mitzvah, you know, you think about the mitzvah after you talk, I want to do the mitzvah. And then, machshava dibo bemahase. Think, you talk, then you do. So, each mitzvah that we want to do, I mean, we think to do it, then we talk about it, and then we do it. So you understand? So the Bnei Israel, during the time of the Bet HaMikdash, there was no happiness when they used to speak in Torah. No happiness at all. No happiness. They didn't care. They studied just for the study. They did mitzvot just for fun. So they did join the mitzvot, unfortunately. Ay, 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 ay. And then, unfortunately, the Bet HaMikdash was destroyed. When I remember something that I have to tell you. I remember uh, there was a, I was invited to uh, to uh, to a marriage, unfortunately, in the middle of the marriage, the father of the Khatan, he had a heart attack and he passed away. In the middle of the Khatana. Just imagine what a tragedy. So it's a big, big, big tragedy. And the Khatan, what he said at that moment, well, it's a shame who wanted this. I mean, these people who, who may they may lose their temper. And we start to talk, why should we do that? Why, yeah, yeah. But he just, he talked in a way. I was, you know, it's a lot of times, unfortunately, those kind of things happened. And you have to know how to react. All, all the time we react with the mouth. We get angry, the mouth talk. You have to be very, very careful. Most of the divorce that we have today in the world because of the mouth. Most of the divorce because everything starts with a mouth. Uh, you know, uh, uh, a small conversation. From a small conversation, something bad could happen from a small conversation. Yes, my friend. I would like just to tell you, and I know that you will not understand, but I will say it. Matot Masai. Matot Masai. You know what is a matot? Mate. The Torah talk about matot. Matot, that means the head of the Jews. The, the honorable people. But matot is as well mati. Mati is a, a stick. Like the mati of Moshe. You know, le baton. Matot masse, you know, usually, if you're on a horse, if you want that the horse will move, boom, you use your stick, the, the mate, you hit the horse, the horse, he, he move. Masse is traveling. Matot. Well, my friend, unfortunately, when a shame is so, when he see that we don't run, we don't walk according to the Torah. So Hashem, he used his mate, he used his stick to hurt us. But he don't use the sword, hair, or the mate. You know, when you are on a horse, you don't, you don't hit, I mean, you don't, you don't push your horse with a knife to injure him to move. No, you use a stick. A small, a petit coup, a small, a small hit in his neck, and he move. So Hashem, but not myself, when Hashem is see that we don't follow the step of the Torah, so he uses his stick. But Hashem we don't hit very hard, slowly. Look, my friend, Hashem did not kill the Jews when he destroyed the temple. He has a choice. 
or finish with the Jews because they don't. They, they, there is no way. They don't respect me, so why I have to respect them? They don't love me, why I have to love them? They don't want to reveal a lot of things, so why I have to give them? But Hashem, He only destroyed the temple as a warning to do Teshua. Yes, my friend. And this is now, we have still, we have another two weeks to go ahead till Tisha B'Av. So Tisha B'Av is the day that, uh, that Hashem give us to remember all what happened to us. You know, Tisha B'Av, we remember the Shoah. On Tisha B'Av, we remember all the bad things that happened to the Jews during the, those few thousand years. Oh la la. It's Tisha B'Av. It's the day. It's a memorial day of all the problems, all the tzar, the tzarot, all the, the bad things that happened to the, Ju- the Judaism. We do remember them, we remember, remember them on Tisha B'Av. And uh, as you know, we remember, we don't remember just for a souvenir. We remember for a reparation. We remember what happened to us, so we can repair. I mean, for me, Tisha B'Av, it's a rebuilding. It's not a destruction, it's a rebuilding. We remember why Tisha B'Av came. So, by remembering why Tisha B'Av came, so maybe we will do a Tishuba Be'ezat Hashem, so Mashiach will come. So we that wish you Bracha Be'etzlacha, we would, one thing to remember, All what you can from your mouth, respect it. You promise to study Torah, respect it. You promise to do mitzvah, respect it. You promise a present to your wife, respect it. You promise to try something, respect it. And if you do respect all the good things that you promise, that it come out from your world, so all kind of tshilo that you do, Hashem, will accept them. Hashem bless you. Thank you. Bye.